Hello and welcome to PC Mag Live. I'm Dan Costa. He is Sasha Segan and we've got a great show for you today. We're going to break down the top tech news of the day. We're going to answer one of your reader questions and show you one cool thing that we pull off the shelf in our lab here in New York City. Sasha, let's get to the big story of the day. This broke late Friday. Turns out the, the second Apple Samsung patent case has been resolved. To no one's real satisfaction, Apple wanted $2 billion. Instead, Samsung was found to violate two patents. They're going to pay Apple $119 million. Apple is going to, in turn, pay Samsung $158,000 for violating some of its patents. And we'll probably re go through this entire thing again in about six months over entirely different patents. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that this is uh, Apple Samsung case number two of 32,768. And uh, these, these two companies are going to continue to butt heads to try to slow each other down. I mean, that's what this is really about. This is not about $119 million is 1 68th of Samsung's uh, quarterly profit. Okay, this is not about getting actual money. This is about mindshare, and this is about bleeding out the energy of your competitor on uh, lawyers and workarounds as opposed to on product development. And there's always that chance. These things usually start off with an ask for, with an injunction. Stop bringing this product. If they can just delay the Galaxy S5 in a few countries for a few months, that's a huge win for Apple. In the same way for Samsung, if, they, if you can just slow them down, you don't have to take the product off the market and the money rewards are almost irrelevant at this point. It's really about just slowing things from getting to the market in time. Exactly. I mean, if, 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 you, can, if you can take one thing from the fact that both sides kind of won part of this case here, it's the fact that everybody in this industry takes from everyone else. And when you have two giants of this size fighting against each other, they're just trying to get whatever judo lever they can. Also in the news, Google's Shopping Express is expanding into NY New York City and LA, or perhaps I should say into Manhattan and LA. Into Manhattan and West LA. So this is this is a real-time sh uh, same-day shopping service. It's, Amazon offers a similar service. For basically five dollars an item, you can get pretty much any kind of grocery uh, sundries delivered to your apartment or to your office directly from Google. Um, seems like this has been tried before. We did have this in New York City in the, around 2000. It was called Cosmo, and it was awesome. Yeah, but this is very different from Cosmo. First of all, this is Google just acting essentially as a subcontracted delivery service for Target, Walgreens, Staples, and some other large chains. Okay, so what's really happening is that these, these big box stores, Target, Walgreens, and Staples, are uh, working together and kind of funneling stuff through Google. Um, Cosmo was more of an independent operation. Cosmo had to maintain their own inventory, their own yeah. warehouses. It was, the and, model was a little different. And Cosmo was also forced to expand far too fast. And Google seems to be taking things a little more hesitantly, which they can nowadays in you know the new age of the internet, as opposed to the first internet boom back in the 90s, when it was all about expand, expand, expand. We don't care about profits. But there's going to be a lot of different services that are launching to offer real-time delivery. Obviously, they're going straight up against Amazon, which has a lot of experience in delivery and in infrastructure. It'll be really interesting to see how this shakes out. But just like things like fiber to the home, what really concerns me here is the difference between the haves and the have-nots. Because you look at uh, you look at Google's service area. Okay, it's Manhattan and West LA. Now, anyone who's ever been to LA knows there's a big difference between West LA, East LA, and South LA. Look it up. You'll figure out what the difference is. And that difference is what makes me queasy, that we are uh, in so many ways dividing this country into uh, the fancy neighborhoods where people get nice things and the not-so-fancy neighborhoods where you do not have that service available to you. Well, let's talk about what people are doing with some of those nice things. Uh, OnePlus, a startup company, we talked about this. They had a very compelling ad campaign where they asked people to smash their phones on YouTube, upload them to YouTube, share them, and they would then be entered into a contest to win one of only 100 uh, OnePlus One new smartphones. This has been extraordinarily successful in some ways and terribly dangerous in others. <laughs> okay, OnePlus is this uh, maverick little cell phone company. Uh, we we uh, did a preview on their new phone, the OnePlus One. It's this really low cost, powerful Android phone. But here, clearly, their marketing people just got carried away with themselves. Because smashing a cell phone with a hammer is not something you want to do without, say, protective goggles. Yeah, it's covered in issues. glass. It's full of toxic chemicals and metals, and also it's just a waste. It's an environmental waste. So it was an interesting idea, but... And they got lots of lots of videos that got uploaded. I saw 
One guy had it run over by a train. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was some pretty creative destruction going on. Now, to their credit, they backpedaled really fast, and now they're saying, donate your phone to Medic Mobile, which is a charity that donates phones to healthcare workers in developing countries, which is a great idea. They, had, they got 140,000 people vying for 100 early OnePlus One devices, and that tells you how much in demand this mysterious, low-cost, powerful new Android smartphone is. And it doesn't seem like anybody actually got hurt, so that's good, too. Yeah. That's good, too. Let's move on to a reader question. We take reader questions on Twitter, on Facebook, via email. This question is from, from Keith via email. He wants to cut the cable cord, and he's heard about this service called Tableau, an over-the-R DVR. Can it help him? Now, I've actually been a cord cutter for years now, and I use a TiVo as an over-the-air DVR. Um, what's interesting about Tableau is Tableau is a new box. It's just coming out now, and specifically what it does is it captures uh, over-the-air signals from any channel you can get with an antenna, uh, saves it on a hard drive, and then broadcasts it to a tablet or PC. So it's primarily for people who want to watch their TV on a tablet or PC. Uh, you, can, you can use it to route to a TV. You have to use a Roku as an extra box to do that, so it's a little clumsy. So I would say look at Tableau if, uh, if the, the big screen TV is not the primary way you want to watch TV, if you typically want to watch TV more on an iPad or on your computer. Otherwise, you might want to look at uh, you might want to look at an over-the-air TiVo. There are a lot of these really reasonable, even used on eBay. That's what I've been using for ages as an over-the-air DVR. Very good. Now it's time for one cool thing. We test thousands of products here in our lab in New York City. Every day we take one thing off the shelf and show it to you live. Today that thing is the MSI GT70, aka the Dominator. This is our new mid-range <coughs> gaming laptop. It is not light. It's eight pounds. But it is going to be complete. It's going to. It's just totally tricked out. It's twenty three hundred dollars. It's got state of the art components. Intel Core i seven quad core processor. Uh, the thing that I really am impressed by is the double shot networking adapter. So this has actually got a control panel, so the gamers can actually manage their network flow both on Wi Fi and on Ethernet and set priorities. So if you're if you if you want your gaming completely jacked up, which you probably do, you can actually physic you can actually go in and actually change the late the latency rates. The thing Pretty that cracks cool the thing that cracks me up is that this is called a laptop. Yeah, it, you're not going to be moving this thing around a lot. It is going to be parked in your, on your desk, um, probably wired into all your speakers as well, but still a pretty fantastic gaming system. Yeah. You can read our full review on PCMag.com. Thanks for joining us today. We'll be back with a brand new show tomorrow.